All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Moore. I'm the GIS technician at Tide. And so what I want to do today in this session is I want to ensure that um, everyone across the world um, can, get, uh, can get access to fire monitoring data um, as readily as possible without having any um, GIS skills such as myself. And so to do that, um, we'll be using the um, BIIRS, or various satellite product, and um, that is freely available. Um, and you can get data from them generally uh, once a day. Um, I also have some links to their page uh, where you can read up on that. And we'll be using also QGIS to read that product. Uh, QGIS, again, is another free product, and I'll show you exactly uh, the steps to go through to get this data on your computer. And for you to, you know, get updated fire uh, monitoring information on your area of interest. Uh, so let's get started. So for me, um, simply you just got to use Google and QGIS you, and then you download it. So you use this link. Uh, this is very straightforward. And depending on your computer, um, I'm a Windows person. So um, by default, you should um, download the the version for the um, Windows. You do have some other versions as well, but that's the one I use. All right. So you have for Mac OS and Linux. Um, once you get that installed, it's a very straightforward installation process. All right. Um, and then um, you get you get started. All right. You go into the program. All right. And just as the program is loading. Uh, what we're using is we're using the, like I mentioned, Verse Active Fire, and it, this web page uh, talks a bit about it. And you also have a small tutorial, and for me, um, you also have this fact sheet uh, that gives you a bit of information on that. And so you can quickly go through that, and you can get access to it. You also have another one here, and that explain in detail like what exactly you're going to be seeing in your ArcGIS and this is the attribute table that you can even get something like the acquired time so what, when that uh, particular fire was active or something like that All right. Um, some people have even uh, set up to receive emails uh, whenever the um, product has been available for a particular region of interest in this case this one is by country All right. and the only thing better than this would be if you have a drone flight and so that would be your next best option, you know, to do drone flights and then you can get your information readily. Now, to continue on, you should be greeted with a screen such as this. And what we want to do is be starting from scratch. And so we'll click on the new um, project. In uh, QG QGIS, um, by default, you should be given um, WGS84 as the... Um, datum you're using but if you want to use a projected um, coordinate system or something like that then you can just use these codes if you're from Belize if you want to use then you can use these codes right here all right so that's 326116 for UTM zone 16 WGS84 and if you want to use NAT27 UTM zone 16 then that's 26716 all right and to do that you just um, search for it okay and so you would just type in the number 32616 up there and then you'd be greeting it here and then when you select it you just hit OK and that would be the coordinate system you're using um, so next we want to get um, some information visible on our screen um, to do that we can use the tile feature that they have um, in this browser bar you can XYZ tiles and they have available readily is OpenStreetMap of course you need some internet access and so you can do that and so you zoom into your area of interest in my case I'm in the southern part of Belize All right, um, and then I can see the areas that I'm interested in see, so you have all of the protected areas already available um, next they have a plugin feature so you want to click on their plugin feature right? and manage and install plugins. And this takes a couple seconds to load. And then we can uh, search for Active Fire. It's right there if you don't have it. You just type in Active Fire and then you'll get it. 
Um, next, you click on it. In your case, you would need to install the plugin. And after you install it, you need to ensure it's enabled. Right? And that's it. And then that's it. You already have your fires loaded up. And you can just double click on this. And it doesn't have to be on that particular icon. You just double click on it. In general, you have symbology. And then we can just change the marker to something that you know you, you want to do. So maybe, I think by default, you should be greeted with this screen. I change it to this um, triangle mode here. And then you just switch that to the particular color you want. Um, I just, you can copy that color code and you paste it in the bottom and then you have the entire fire being of that same color, right? Yeah. All right, and okay. And so now we have our active fires loaded up. And of course, this is not limited to just this particular region of interest. So you can go on to other parts of the world as well. All right, and just like that, you have your active fires. You can zoom in a bit more. If you want to, you can select using this icon, right? Just click on it and you drop over that fire, right? And you can go into the attribute table of that uh, feature and then you can show only the selected features. So I can see the information that I mentioned earlier in terms of that fire. And so we have the date, which is the 26th, today is the 27th. We have the acquired time, so this was a night fire generally, right? Wait, the time. That's odd. I think 19 is like 7. I guess they, 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 they log it a bit different. But this is 7 or 6 p.m. All right, and just like that, you have your fire. Um, you also have some other information here. Uh, this has to do with the brightness or the intensity of the fire. Okay. Uh, let's just move on to another one where we have some more fire and you can see more information. Uh, this, uh, this fire right here. Alright. And so again we open attribute table. And then we show selected features. Um, so again, same time. This was more or less when the satellite was moving around the area, I guess. And so that's when it picked up this fire. Okay. And so, uh, you notice all of them have very similar brightness intensities. But if you needed to send in a team to do fire suppression, you now have an idea of where the fire is occurring. And then you're, with your local knowledge of this particular area, uh, you can go in. So if you notice, there's a little waterway right here. And I'm not seeing any roads that are accessing this area. So using your local knowledge, you'll be able to know exactly what you need to do to manage this fire. Uh, whether, whether it's through active uh, methods by sending in a team, or through more passive methods by um, maybe it's the, based on the direction it's heading, it's gonna be it's gonna die out in the river or something, you know. Anyways, guys, I think that uh, concludes what I wanted to um, show you guys today. Okay, so with that. Um, I want to thank you guys for being a part of the lesson and um, you know you can use this information as freely available uh, for your purposes at your organization whether it's the police department or the fire department or maybe some national agency um, I want to thank you guys and have a nice day